What's up guys, welcome back to Among the Fence. Today we're gonna to be talking about, well, me. I've been getting a lot of comments and a lot of questions about my own personal music tastes and bands I like and dislike. And I found this little survey thing on Facebook that's been going around in some of the groups I'm in. And it goes over all those, it's 12 questions. So I figured for my 25th video and a thank you for you guys who are subscribing, liking and commenting. I'd give you a little bit more insight into my own personal tastes. And the first question on this list starts out with the most controversial question you can ask anybody it is band that I hate. And it took me a long time to really think of a band that I actually hate. There's a lot of bands I don't really like and I don't listen to or I just kind of don't really care for, but a band that I hate, I would have to go with Kiss. And it's kind of a weird answer, but the reason why is because they got all this hype and all this fame and stuff just from, honestly, their gimmick. They were extreme. Gene Simmons would stick out his tongue and it was all just creepy and they were dark, especially for the era that they were in. And as far as their music is, I don't like it at all. I think they're all absolutely horrible songs. I mean, I'm sure they might be decent musicians, but I have yet to find a song that portrays any good musical talent or songwriting whatsoever. And the next one is bands that I think are overrated. Now, when I say this, I don't want you to get this confused and think that I dislike this band at all. It's just, I think that their hype and their current status is way too much for what it should be just based on their history. And that would be Metallica. <laughs> And again, I don't hate Metallica and I don't think they're a bad band at all. In fact, I have tons of respect and I recognize the fact that they are the forerunners and the founders of modern metal and thrash metal and they have sold out concerts for the past 20, 30 years and they put on amazing live shows and I understand all that. But the reason why I think they're overrated is because they haven't come out with a good album since the Black Album and people still love them and rant and rave about how fantastic they are and how heavy they are and how good songwriters they are. But I mean, you might like some other albums after the Black Album, but I mean, the general consensus of everybody is that that was their last good album and it came out in like 1990 or 92 or something like that. It came out like 20 years ago <laughs> and they have so many albums and all their albums before that are nearly damn perfect. So yes, they are fantastic. All their old stuff, I just probably sound like an old boomer now, but all their old stuff is superb. It's amazingly well-written, it's heavy, it's great. Even if the production on some of it isn't good, who cares, it was made in the late 80s. So yes, since the Black Album, everything after that is either absolute trash or just, eh, it's all right. So for their, popularity that they carry today just based off of like their first five albums is is, is mind-boggling to me. <laughs> the next question is band that I love and I've read all these questions and I literally just spent probably about 10 minutes trying to think of what bands I could put in different sections because I don't want them to overlap too much. I don't want to just pick like the same three bands for different things. But I take this as my favorite band and my overall, like my all time favorite band in the whole world. And I have to go with Pink Floyd. I mean, I'm wearing their shirt. I got like four of their shirts. This is from their later years album that I got. And I love Pink Floyd because I feel like that is what got me into loving music in general. I remember being eight years old, maybe, sitting on my brother's bed in his room watching him play Final Fantasy VII back in like 1990, like four or five. And he would be listening to Dark Side of the Moon or Pink Floyd's The Wall and just sitting there, like I, I could picture it perfectly, just sitting there watching him play this fantasy game, listening to this music that I've never heard before and these guitar solos I've never heard before. I would even say that's what got me into playing guitar too. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed, I'm sure you have. I have a guitar case behind me in every one of my videos. This is probably the second one I've had in a video. And it got me into playing guitar. It got me into just a whole nother level of what music could be. And if I had to pick a favorite album from Pink Floyd, I would probably say my two favorites are either Animals or Wish You Were Here. 
in that order. And just for fun, go ahead and leave a comment below letting me know what your favorite Pink Floyd album is. The next question is a band that I can listen to over and over and over again, and that would probably be Gunship, which some of you might not know who they are, and some of you who do might think that's a really weird pick for me because they're more of like a 80s style synth band, and they come from Germany, I believe. I'm probably wrong on that, but my brother, the same one who got me into Pink Floyd, showed me this band, I believe it was like 2016, and I have been obsessed ever since. I listen to them almost every single day, whether it be a chance I get to listen to them at work or while I'm playing video games at home or just whenever. The next question is bands that made me fall in love with music, specifically heavy music. And for that, I would say there's probably two or three bands that might fit into that category. I think it was Seventh Grain when I started listening to System of a Down. And at that time, they were still like, really heavy but there's so many different instances when I started listening to all these bands at the same time that made me fall in love with heavy music but I remember way back to like fourth grade it would probably have to be Rage Against the Machine I think I found like a copy of it laying around from one of my brothers or something and it was Evil Empire and I thought it was the coolest looking album cover I'd ever seen it was so strange and I put it on and Tom Morello's guitar and just how raw and simple everything was and just the writing and the vocals from Zach De La Rocha and it just the whole thing all together like I think the heaviest thing I listened to since like before that was like Matchbox 20 or something I don't I don't remember but yeah like that was the first experience I ever had with heavily distorted guitars and really fast patterns and just heavier stuff. Next is Band That Changed My Life. And I gotta go with two of them on this one. The first one is going to be August Burns Red. And the second one is going to be Coheed and Cambria. And it's almost for the exact same reasons. I mentioned before that I'm a guitar player. I've been playing for like 17, 18 years now. Jeez, that's a long time. I've been playing for a very long time. So I've learned all kinds of different styles of music. I've gone through ruts and things like that. But I was going through a period in my life when I was just very, very uninspired. All music was just kind of boring to me. I'd try to learn a song. I'd either pick up on it real quick and get bored or it would be too difficult for me, which I was just not very persistent in it. And again, I would just get bored and start fiddling around or I just would take breaks from playing. But in 2017, August Burns Red, who I was already well aware of before, came out with the album Phantom Anthem, which had a whole new style of melodies that I haven't really heard before, different types of songwriting, different types of structure. It was just, it was like a progressive metalcore album that I've never heard before. And once I got into that album and I started to learn some of their songs, I got excited about music again, about playing guitar. And the same thing happened to me with Coheed and Cambry. I started going through all of their music. Heck, even my, the name of my YouTube channel is from their albums and their music and their, uh, their comic book series among the fence is a phrase that's used in there and it comes from the comics. And I, again, I was kind of just uninspired and I was kind of losing my excitement for music, even just listening to music in general, which has always been a big part of my life. But finding those two bands and listening to their music as it comes out and going back and listening to their older stuff has always been inspiring to me. And it's probably changed my life, especially in terms of writing my own music. Next is bands that surprise me. And I just did a review on this band. And if you watch that, you probably won't be surprised that I'll say Johnny Booth. Johnny Booth only has two albums. The album that I reviewed was First Hand Accounts, which came out last year. And I wasn't really sure what to expect from that band. And holy hell, they are freaking amazing. I've been listening to them so much. Again, you could probably throw that into a band that kind of changed my life because they got me so excited to listen to the music again, even though I wasn't really lacking in it. But it's just something so new and so fresh. Just from the name, I was like... <laughs> Expecting like a metal jazz band or something. I don't know. The next question is a guilty pleasure. And I have a lot of these. Like, 
I probably shouldn't feel guilty for it, but I think Green Day could probably go on the list. Not like any of their newer stuff, but Dookie. I can listen to that whole album all the way through and have a great time. Uh, even bands like 311. And if you want to get into rap, I mean, there's Eminem, Kendrick Lamar, Kanye West. I mean, there's so many guilty pleasure bands out there. I, it's hard to name just one. Next question is band I should have seen by now. And that one is kind of tough because I've seen a lot of bands and I don't like feel like I've missed out by not seeing some of these bands. But one band I feel like, which isn't really all that popular, is a band called Era, which they're a metalcore band. And they have the singer from Texas in July, which was also a metalcore band. And they're like the most insanely creative kind of all over the place kind of band. I mean, there's so many different styles of music crammed into just one of their songs. And I discovered them probably about a year and a half ago or something like that. And I fell in love with them and they came to chain reaction in Southern California and only maybe like 30 minutes away from where I live. And it was maybe 25 bucks for a ticket. And I was contemplating it. And for some reason I didn't go and I feel kind of dumb, especially now with <laughs> all the quarantine stuff going on and people not being able to put on concerts and stuff like it's just, I've, uh, I wish I would have went. The next question is bands I used to love and it comes down to two bands and the first one would have to be under oath because in high school and a little bit after I graduated, their first four albums were on constant repeat and rotation for me. I listened to them all the time I could open up my CD case, which had like 80 albums and CDs. And I would, it, it was always one of those. But after Lost in Sound and Separation, I just kind of lost the feel for them after a while. And then they broke up and then they got back together. And the last album they came out with was, I hated it. It was absolute garbage. Uh, especially since they denounced Christianity, which is fine, but they're just so bitter about it all the time and they just act like everyone's attacking them and like no nobody cares N nobody cares they're just the whole band changed i don't like the band anymore i don't like their music anymore they're just kind of there and i used to love them the next band would have to be avenge sevenfold when backcountry came out holy crap again it was one of those bands that was just constantly being listened to whether it was in my car or my cd player at home and then i didn't like after that, I just kind of quit caring. They came out with other albums and I didn't even like really listen to them or give them a chance at all. I just I just moved on to other stuff in the meantime, I guess. The last question is band or bands who influence your taste. And I feel like there's this time in everybody's life when you discover your own musical identity and like where before that you listen to like whatever your dad or your mom, or for me, my brothers listened to, which again, it was like Pink Floyd, uh, my other brother liked The Doors, uh, Rage Against the Machine, Offspring, like bands like that where I was just kind of listening to whatever they were listening to and I enjoyed it a lot, but I wasn't discovering things for myself. And there was one time when I went on vacation and I ended up going to Tower Records for those of you old people out there who <laughs> remember what that is. And I came across this band called Dream Theater. And I had heard a lot about them. Well, actually not really. I just knew that their drummer was really good. I never heard of John Petrucci or anything. I never heard a single song from him. And I purchased these two albums, uh, Scenes from a Memory and Octavarium. And I started out with Octavarium and my whole musical world was completely flipped upside down of what music was and what it could be and what heavy music was and different melodies and like it, it, for me it was like Pink Floyd on steroids and I wouldn't say Dream Theater is one of my all-time favorite bands and I love John Petrucci but I don't I'm not like overly obsessed with them if you go and click on any guitar players page even if they're an acoustic guitar player they're completely obsessed with John Petrucci probably and that just seems to be the YouTube thing nowadays especially for musicians and I think he's great, but I'm not completely obsessed with him. But as far as like influencing my taste in music over my life, that would probably be the most influential. That's when I found my my musical identity, when I started listening to my own stuff and deciding what I liked instead of listening to whatever my brothers or my dad was listening to at the time. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, getting a chance to 
know my inner workings, especially when I'm giving an album review. Again, I'm no like professional and all my reviews are 100% opinion. I don't want anybody to ever <laughs> think that I'm basing this off of facts other than just what I'm listening to and what I'm interpreting of the music at the time. And I hope you guys enjoyed just getting a chance to figure out some of my favorite stuff when it comes to music. I think that sharing musical interests is a lot of fun. So if you have any bands that you love, hate, or influenced you in any way or changed your life at all, go ahead and leave a comment below letting me know what they are. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of my album reviews, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notified and you don't miss out on any of my future uploads. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and I'll see you guys next time. I was